Psalms 104. For the Great Commission is to go into the earth and make disciples of men to let them know that Jesus really lives. He came and died. He took away our sin. There's flames of fire. Flames of fire. He's making us a flame. A flame of fire. Hello and welcome to Flames of Fire. My name is Apostle Angela Benjamin Fox and I am so excited about our show today. Um, I have with me um, one of the women from Women of Action. Um, who I met a couple of months ago. She is a phenomenal woman of God, and her name is Kimberly West Williams, and she is going to share um, her book, The Making of a Matriarch. And I am just so excited because I, you know, I got into the book last night and I just had to put it down. <laughs> and so I'm excited about having Kim, I call her Kim, on the show today. Thank I'm going to pray. Um, and make a couple of announcements, and I want to give all the time to her. So, Father, I just thank you for Flames of Fire today, Father. I thank you what you're doing in the entertainment mountain, Father God, in the educational mountain, God. I thank you for what you're going to do on this show today that will give us keys, Father, that we can be successful, powerful women, single women, married. To, uh, God, just, just whatever you want to do in this show today, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come in now and to, and to show us and to give us strategies um, that Kim is going to share with us today that would help us to go out in life, to fulfill destiny, to fulfill purpose, no matter what has come against us, no matter what messes we have found ourselves in. And we are just so grateful, Father, that you've given us this opportunity today. I pray for every viewer, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I just have a couple of announcements. Um, of course, uh, Nevea Salt, the play, is June 30th. You can get tickets now at the box office. Um, um, I believe they're going to put the flyer up. All the information is on the flyer. Uh, we're almost sold out. I'm so excited. I thank God for it. Um, he gave me a grace to write, direct, and produce. All the music is fresh. Yes, we'll have our album out in one month, and um, we produced all the songs. And it's really a phenomenal play. Um, the play is about... Uh, two people, Nevea Salt and her um, fiance Elijah. He gives his life to the Lord. She doesn't. And so all the drama stems around her. And um, she causes a lot of pain to her family and her friends because she doesn't want to get into what uh, God has called her to do on the other side. And that is to serve him and give her gift to him. So come on out and see the play. The, um, general admission is $25. We're all out of VIP seats. And so praise God for that. And also next week, the whole cast will be here. So you'll get some of the music. Another woman of God from uh, Woman of Action, Zena. She just dropped her CD. She is actually going to be in the play. She'll be here next week to sing her song live. Um, all the cast members uh, will be here. And there's the flyer right there above. And it's going to be great. Um, so go online and get your tickets, you guys. We only got a couple of more seats left. Praise God. Okay, so today... My special guest. Um, oh, I did want to say one more thing. Uh, somebody asked me how Flames of Fire got birth. Um, Flames of Fire got birth out of uh, Virtuous Women Holding Complete, which is um, my ministry. And I do Flames of Fire women's conferences to empower women in leadership, to empower them in their destinies, where they want to go, what they're supposed to be, if they're supposed to be authors, business women. And so the Holy Spirit, when he led me to do this, he said, I'm going to place from Psalms 104. He said, I will bless the Lord, O my soul, O my Lord God, for thou art great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out his heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the winds of the earth. And this is verse 4, he says, who maketh his angels spirits, whose ministers a flame of fire. And so today I was excited because Kim is one of the flames of fire that, are, that is here with me today because that is what God has called me to do. He said, I've created a platform for you so you can create a platform for other women in, of action, women who are doing things in my kingdom to build other women, build sisterhood, build promises and dreams. So I'm, 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 I'm putting this out there to, the, to you guys. Um, I stay on the air by your supporting and giving into my ministry. This is part of my ministry. You can go to PayPal and put in flamesoffireshow.com um, and you can give so I can stay on the air and 
give a platform to beautiful women like Kim and others who are going to come on. I appreciate everyone who sews into my ministry. So that's what Flames of Fire is about, to, pro to provide a platform for people to come on to, to talk about what God is doing in their lives that are building other people. Amen. Amen. So on that note, Amen. help me welcome Miss Kimberly. <laughs> welcome, Kim. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much for having me on your show today, as well as just supporting and promoting sisterhood. I tell women, sisterhood is more than saying, oh, this is my sis. This is my sister in Christ. Sisterhood, if you dissect the word Come on and you look at the word hood, and we're not talking about your neighborhood, <laughs> your gang that you're okay. from, we say hood. We're talking about Hood is the covering of the head and the neck. Yes. And as woe, women of action, as matriarchs, as women that represent flames of fire, we are women that are leaders. Yes. We need other sisters to cover us as leaders. Yes. That's the head. And we are women of influence. Yes. The neck. Come on. Covering now. the head and the neck. Women of influence have to cover one another. We have to be each other's sister's keeper. Instead of tearing each other down, instead of um, competing, yes. instead of competing, we want to do what we're doing today, and that's collaborating. It's yes. not about competing. It's not about competition with sisters. When we really embrace sisterhood, it's about collaborating in the kingdom yes. in order to grow the kingdom and yes, grow God. other and, and empower other women. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for having me you on today. You are awesome. I'm so glad. You my sissy. Okay. Would you tell them about, tell them about okay. how they tried to stop us from getting here? Oh, yes. Oh, both of us on what the way see? down, um, um, the, 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 120, the 21 or the 121, that freeway, there was an accident. There was yes, an accident on, on 605. 605. And so that's why we had to come on later. But I want to give her time. So I want to give her time because fire here today. this book that she has written, The Making of a Matriarch, um, Chapter one, tell, tell us about chapter one. Tell us about being daddy's girl. What is it to be daddy's girl and how did that um, chapter get birthed? Well, this book is an autobiography. I was ashamed for a while to just really say that this was an autobiography. So I wanted people to really just like guess when they read the book who it was about. But God told me it's the transparency of my testimony that's gonna save someone's yes. life. Yes. And so the first chapter is called Daddy's Girl. The book is based on the premise that a girl's first love is her daddy. And I heard someone say not too long ago that a girl's father in her life is very vital. Mm -hmm. She can be the smartest woman, she can be the prettiest woman, but if she does not have the love of her father mm -hmm. or relationship with her father, there's always going to be some type of insecurity there. Wow. Whereas when she has a great relationship with her father, she can be overweight, she can be maybe not that successful, mm -hmm. but she's going to have confidence because she has a great relationship with her father. So the premise of my book is that a girl's first love is her dad, whether he's absent or present. And I was a daddy's girl. I loved the ground my daddy walked on. And my dad didn't walk, he was confined to a wheelchair. He was struck with polio at the age of two, so he was a paraplegic. And not only was he a paraplegic, he was a drug addict and he was an alcoholic. Mm. So although I know that my dad loved me the best he could and I loved my dad, we had a very intense relationship and a very volatile relationship. And what I found was, like most women, we are looking for our dad in the men that we date. Mm -hmm. So my dad was charismatic. He was, back in his day, a baller. Mm -hmm. My dad was charming. He was a ladies' man. And he did everything out of that wheelchair but get up and walk. You okay. know, he was a lightweight pimp. He did jail time and could turn around and get a prestigious w award from L.A. County. So the men that I dated, I was found myself dating the same man just dressed up in different attire. You said something right there. It was the same man. It was my dad. No, he wasn't in a wheelchair. No, he didn't have substance abuse issues. Mm -hmm. But 
the charisma, mm -hmm. the charm, mm -hmm. the uh, being a womanizer, yes. the thinking that I can give you some money and you go play because that solves everything. I found myself being in dysfunctional or unhealthy relationships and I had to at some point look at myself and say, what's the common denominator in the lack of success for all these relationships? That's good right there. What is the common denominator? And the common denominator was me. It was, it was me. Mm -hmm. So I realized, um, you know, I started becoming self-aware because that's the first step is being aware. Being aware. Being aware of who you are. I can't have self-love until I have self-awareness. Who, who am I? That's good. You, you, and and I'm, I'm, I want to uh, interject right here. Yeah. I like what you said. Yes. Um, being aware of who you are. Yes. Because we, we, we attract what's inside of us. I like when you said that. We attract the same type of men because we don't know who we are really. And we're yes. looking for the things that that's yes, familiar apostle, to us. Yes. And so we don't want that anymore. So self-preservation, oh knowing God. your identity, knowing what God has called you yes, to be. Yes, you better and say that. And when you change all of that inside yes. of you, then you start attracting what God wants you to have. So I'm going to jump to chapter four because yes. I want to get through a couple of chapters. This book yes. is awesome. Yes. Um, and um, it, chapter four talks about your son. Tell us about, I don't want to say his name wrong. I, so I, I want you to, a key. I like it. You guys have to buy this book. I'm telling you, you kept me up all night. So a key. So talk about your son. And I know your son came from your marriage, or did it come, yes, it from, come marriage, from your marriage? From, from marriage. marriage. But talk about talk about that as and, and because you ended up being a single parent. I ended right? up being a single parent. I was yes. married, and uh, my husband and I decided to have a child. And by the time I was four months pregnant. He had stayed out all night, and it had broken my heart. Jesus. And I had called every place. Back then, they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have so cell phones. So I had called every place that he said he was, and they said he wasn't there. Okay. And I decided I wanted my son to be, even if it was just having, a, having just me, mm -hmm. I wanted him to grow up in a healthy home. So I left my husband, and I became a single parent. And Aki was born. And Aki is my son's middle name. Aki stands for, yes. as my dad said, there, there's something in a name. Yes. My dad told me, because my, dad, my dad's name was Lark. Mm -hmm. So he says, I, I want you to name him Lark. If he can't have my last name, I want him to have my first name. But who in this time, this day and time's name is Lark? So dad, mm -hmm. no. And so my uh, ex-husband was like, no, he needs to be a junior. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to allow my dad to give him the middle name. And so my dad said, Aki meant great African warrior. Okay. And as I read a little bit more about the name Aki and researched it, it represents leadership. Come on. It represents independence. Mm -hmm. It represents bravery, creativity, and... I wish I had to research the name a little bit more when I was raising my son as a single mom because, you know, my son, he was just, he was always dancing to the beat of his own drum. Okay. And I was always trying to corral him and sit down. No, don't do that. And the teacher said you did this and no. Mm -hmm. And not realizing those were traits and those were signs of a leader. And that derived from the name that we had given yes. him, Aki. So there's something... In a name. In a name. Something, like they say, there's something about that name. <laughs> there's something in a in name. In a name. And so um, um, you also wrote um, in your book a beautiful poem, There's a Hole in My Soul. And when I read that, I was like, oh, my gosh. She has to, I would like you to read that if you could yes. read that little bit of that out of her book. Um, all of the information for you to get the book, I believe you can go to Kim's website. And um, www. www is underneath um, oh, her good. name when they put her up. And... Um, you can order the book. The book is excellent. I'm telling you guys, the book is excellent. You can order the book, and um, it'll bless you. But I want her to read a little bit of this poem. It was so awesome. I just thank you. How so was that? It was like it was so awesome. Thank you, Apostle. Uh, the poem is "There's a Hole in My Soul," and it's funny, funny because men and women that read this poem, they almost want me to change the title of the book to the title of this poem. And the poem reads. 
There's a hole in my soul that goes very deep. As I cried to mend it, I began to weep. I didn't know why it was here or how it began, but it's like a bad dream that never ends. Someone asked, how long has your soul been impaired? I attempted to answer, but inside I felt scared. I don't remember, want to remember all the culprits and all the perpetrators. I'd just rather be recognized as a child that was a gladiator. Mm. Inside the hole, there are so many dark places filled with bad memories and elusive faces. If I could go back in time, I would erase the meaningless relationships that still consume me in this space. At the bottom of my soul, I hear faint voices. They're calling to be rescued from all of the noises. The voices want to ask for guidance and affection for the soul that was abandoned at the time of conception. I tried to fill up the hole with many objections and pretend that I didn't, need the ex that I didn't experience the pain of rejection. Mm. The pain that hurt deeply when I heard I was not enough. I just wanted to fill up the hole with I thought was with some good stuff. Mm. At the bottom of the hole, there were some friends. The hole became deeper when betrayal stepped in. My God. There were some men that stopped by the hole but they could not feel the depth of my bleeding soul. One day I looked up and out of the darkness, there was a ray of light. I heard a voice tell me one day that everything was going to be all right and there will be no longer that empty hole. There is a God that can restore my soul. Yes, that's so good. When I read that, I was like, yes, that just put it all in a nutshell. And so we, we got a few minutes left, and I jumped all the way over to chapter 9. And since we're talking about the soul, in chapter 9, Kim talks about the flesh which versus our spirit. Knowing who we are and whose we are is important. Your identity is important. So talk about chapter nine, that, that flesh versus, versus uh, the spirit. The your poem just, versus yeah. the spirit. And so the, <laughs> the poem kind of tells it all and sums up really what the book was about. Mm -hmm. Because the book is a, a three-part book and it's about self-awareness, knowing who I am. And it's about self-love learning to love who I am. And the third part, which is um, the flesh versus the spirit, it's about a woman having a self-evolution and learning whose I am. That's good. And so, you know, many of us have been in relationships and we've had intimacy, but we haven't had intimacy. Oh, that's good. Intimacy, yes, that's good. Yes, ma'am. Intimacy but you're really not seeing into me. Mm -hmm. And so the flesh versus the spirit right there because we're operating in the flesh and we're out of order. Mm -hmm. Anytime you operate in the flesh, you're out of order. I heard you previously say earlier in an interview that a man finds a wife, finds a good thing. So a lot of us are, we can't wait to be found. So we're, we're doing the seeking. Right. We're doing the find. Mm -hmm. We're out of order. We need to become a good thing. We need to become a good thing. We need to become that Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> that 31 woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> that Proverbs 31 woman. So we can be found. So he can find a good thing. We need to become the crown upon our husband's head. Yes. But when we don't know whose we are or we don't love who we are, we become out of order. Yes. So we're, we're leading with our flesh. We're giving our body away. We're putting the cart before the horse. So many women, nowadays a lot of men, they're, they're not wifing women because they don't have to. They don't have to. They don't have to because we've allowed our flesh to control us. We allowed a couple of nice words, uh -huh. a couple of nice trinkets, a couple of nice gifts, a couple of nice gifts and some kind words. Now we're, we're casting our pearls to the swines. Mm -hmm. And what, what do they do? What do swines do mm. when they get pearls? Make a mess. Make a mess. <laughs> Regurgitate it. They don't. They, on to the next pearl. Uh huh. So in the, in the um, chapter, The Flesh Versus the Spirit, I talk about the struggle of the flesh because cause when we start having those kind of activities and start leading with our flesh and we start being in and out of the bed with men, now we're infecting our souls. Come on now. Our souls yes. are infected. Yes. So our soul is crying out for something. Yes. Love. 
crying out for love, but we're, we're getting it the wrong, wrong way. way. And what happens when it's a hole? It's just a, it's a bottomless pit. Jesus. It's a bottomless pit. So we're feeding our soul, this bottomless pit that we're allowing to lead. We're feeding our soul with sex, with uh, nasty conversations, My with God. trinkets, with things that it's not going to be fulfilling. Right. Because we're not feeding our spirit. But the minute we start feeding our spirit and we get strong enough and we start finding out and telling ourselves and having an evolution of whose I am. Right. I am the daughter of the most highest. A daughter. A daughter. My daddy, my daddy is a king. Yes. You just can't step to me exactly. like that. Exactly. You just, do you know who I am? Yeah, do you know who I am? But many times in the church, we don't want to address the uh, sexual issues that people are dealing with. We want to sweep it under the carpet. Under the carpet. From the pulpit to That's the pews. Right to the pews. That's, That's right. going on. That's going on. So we have to. How do we combat it? We have support groups. But how do we combat it? We combat it. With the word. With the word of God. We combat it with the word of God. And that's how the flesh gets defeated by the spirit. Amen. Um, we only got a few more minutes, but okay. I felt the spirit of God wanted me to tell you that he's raising you up to be a Deborah. And Deborah sat up underneath the tree. And Deborah, sat, Deborah was a judge. And Deborah helped Barack. Because he didn't want to go to war. He said, if you go with me, I'll go. And so I believe that God is going to send you to different places and you're going to be a Deborah. And, and, and the women of God watched Deborah. I preached this one time. They watched Deborah. And so when, when the war went on and Jezel had to go after that king, the women in the house knew what to do because Deborah had already taught them. Because she had already shown them. And I decree and declare over your life, woman of God, that you will be the Deborah in this season to lead women, to lead and show them the right way. Way, even through the making of the patriarch, even through your society. You, and God, God says, you will be the judge. Thank I will raise you up and you will go to the Baraks and you will lead Thank them. You, and women will follow you and they will know what to do when we go out into the army and we have to kill. And we can take a hammer and nail it into that king. Nail it into um, 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 perversion. Nail it into sexual mm, abuse. Yes, nail, yes, yes, nail it into yes, the things yes, that keep us yes, from being um, uh, yes, what God has called us to be. Yes. And so that Thank I decree you. and declare that over your life. Thank you. Thank you Jesus. so much for joining Thank me you. today. Please Thank come you. back next week. Like I said, we'll have the cast from the Bay of Saul. There'll be an hour show. I'm so excited what God is doing here on the Cross TV. I know God is about to do some wonderful things, and I'm just excited to be back. Thank you for your love offerings. Your love offerings help me to stay on the air and to help me to bring platforms to beautiful women like Thank Kim so and all Thank the people so that are much. coming. Thank this you. is what God has called me to do. I'm happy. I am so excited. Thank you to the Cross TV, to Dr. Joseph. I love you. God bless you, and I'll see you next week with on Flames of Fire. Flames of Fire. Sun, sun is for the Great Commission is to go into the earth and make disciples of men to let them know that Jesus really is.